Hello, I'm Dean Mitchell. Welcome to the Museum of Arts and Science and my solo show uh, in Daytona Beach. Uh, the first painting that you're seeing here is of uh, New Orleans. Uh, it's titled uh, Damaged Balcony, I believe. And uh, for a number of years, I had a gallery that represented my work. But my first experience in New Orleans was at the New Orleans World's Fair, I believe it was in the 1980s. And I was really captivated by the city, and I realized the fragileness of the city because it's below sea level. And I was just so captivated by the, by the history there. And when Katrina hit, uh, I had a gallery representation there. And after Katrina hit, I became even more enamored with capturing uh, a sense of place and, and a sense of uh, time. And this is why I've been so interested in New Orleans, because there's been so many different businesses here. There's a lot of damage from the hurricane. And just trying to capture that sense of space and what's happened to it. But at the same time, it's still standing. So there's a sense of survival that I, that I really love about these structures. And also the way they built uh, the French Quarter. Uh, I think it's on the highest grounds in New Orleans. And so people did take into consideration that it was below sea level. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of wrought iron there that was made by, by slaves. And so I've really been really just pulled into the space because of jazz. It's just, it just has such deep history there. So I feel honored to capture some of that history and hopefully this will be enjoyed for, uh, for future generations long after I'm gone as a Uh, these are these two paintings here are, are of tobacco barns, and uh, it's funny. I grew up in the South. I I worked in tobacco. I actually hung tobacco in these types of structures, and it's funny. I did so many of them when I was a child. Uh, I thought I'd never paint them again, and then I returned home, and I became even more fascinated with them. I didn't realize how massive these structures were. Uh, the first one here you see here. Uh, it actually was done from a pencil sketch in my studio. Uh, a lot of times uh, when I was a kid, we, we, we called it going outside and drawing paint. Now we call it plain air, which is I guess a fancy term for going outside and painting. But uh, a lot of the, the barns too, some of them, like the one, the acrylic thing here on the, to, the, to the right of me, uh, was actually partially done from memory and sketches. Uh, the barns now have totally, uh, disintegrated, they've been destroyed, a lot of them are no longer standing. So I feel like I've caught a part of history. Uh, what I have recognized in terms of doing, doing watercolors, particularly this one here, is that my sense of the space, because I'm so familiar with the space, there is a, there's a sense of uh, freedom in the, in the washes and the, and the approach is pretty abstract. It's very loose, and very free. Uh, there's no drawing, it's all done with a brush. Uh, and sometimes I, they, they turn out fine and sometimes they don't. I kind of like that daring quality about watercolor by not putting any pencil down. I feel a sense of total freedom. And I hope that you can get a sense of how I dropped the paint. In fact, I started at the easel and then before it was over, I was standing over dripping paint and dropping paint everywhere. And this is what you see, the, the nice freedom of the brushwork. So I'm trying to capture a certain energy in it. The, the acrylic there, uh, if you look at the side of the structure, uh, it's really quite abstract. It's very little detail. A lot of people think that my work has a lot of detail in it, but it doesn't. It, there's a lot of editing. Uh, it's, it's very, very abstract. I have the ability to abstract something and make you feel there's a lot of detail in it with a sense of illusion. By adding a few lines here and there, your eye kind of automatically fills in certain things and certain textures based upon how I push the paint around or rubbed it or scrubbed it or something to give you an illusion of texture of wood and so forth. It's funny, uh, I had an exhibition along with a friend of mine, uh, his, uh, his name is Tim Myrick, he's also an artist, he grew up in Quincy as I did. And we were, we were down, we were home, we were looking for other tobacco barns to paint and we noticed that most had been destroyed. And we didn't realize uh, from talking to Grace uh, Robinson at the uh, Gaston Art Center that there was a farm uh, called Ball Farm and, the, and these barns were still standing. So we actually engaged her and she engaged the, the owner of the, of, the, uh, of the spaces there and that had some of these barns on it. And so we, Tim and I both went out there and we became very taken with the tobacco barns because as I said, we both grew up working in them. 
But what also we were taken by was the, the southern, the mosque, the Spanish mosque, which is very indigenous to the south. In fact, uh, I've been in a lot of shows out west, and I took the courage of, of entering a tobacco barn in one of the shows at the Gene Autry's Western Art Show. And one of the collectors uh, asked me, said, is this barn in the west? Because these particular collectors are only interested in collecting things that are west of the Mississippi. And so he asked me about this barn because he wasn't familiar with it, so I told him it was a tobacco barn. And so he was so in love with it that he said, I don't care if it's in the West, I, I, I want it for my collection. So that's, you know, I was really taken with the fact that I felt like I captured something that was universal that even this collector of the West who only collected Western art also wanted it. Um, and the other interesting thing about the, the oak trees is that, you know, as a kid growing up, we all sat up under the oak trees. Some of these oak trees can be, become very massive in scale. In fact, a lot of the homes in Quincy, they still have a lot of these trees that create a, a, a huge amount of shade, a lot of interesting shadows and abstract shadows on the ground. Uh, so I'm very interested in capturing a sense of light. Uh, I think light can add atmosphere, can give you a sense of abstracting a space. And that's just what I love about the Southern Light. And I think both of these paintings capture that. Southern Light. The, the other thing I want to talk about was uh, Florida, or, or just the South in general. I really was after trying to capture the heat, and I hope you can feel the heat in, in this painting, particularly on the tin roofs, because a lot of uh, a lot of the homes had tin roofs, and we had a tin roof on our home. And I just love when, whenever it rained and the, and the rain would hit the tin roof. It just it was very soothing, a very soothing feeling. But the other thing about people, artists always ask me about my process. Now, uh, a lot of times I'll you know start at the easel, but by by the time it's over with, uh, I'm, I, the painting is laying, lying on the floor. And what you see here, particularly uh, in the tree area, is really a sense of abstracting. Uh, it's not a very rendered space, but you feel the illusion of, 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 of leaves and, and foliage, but I'm actually dripping and dropping the paint. You know, no different than the way uh, Jackson Pollock would do. Uh, even some of the, the darks in the, in the trees, uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm layering the paint very heavily, but very quickly. There's, there's not a lot of back and forth. It's very direct and very quickly. That's why it, it, it maintains its freshness do it very, very, very quickly. Now, it's taken me years to be able to be daring like that. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And if it doesn't work, I just start over. Uh, that's how I work as a painter. I, I like the fact that, you know, watercolor is, in, in a way, unforgiving. But in a sense, you can still control it, but not too much, so you don't lose uh, that creative process, that spontaneity that you want people to make. When they see the real thing, they can feel the, the artist's engagement and how he's handling the painting. It just, it just adds so much more life to it when you're, when you're not like filling in a little color. But it's just a little bit different. It's a little bit different process. Nothing wrong with that. But I like that sense of freedom.